So Steve Greenstein is the CEO of this company, and um, I'm the uh, inventor of this particular product. There was a whole bunch of text that's uh, showing up here, but not over here on this particular slide. So I'm not sure exactly why that happened, but um, and we're here to tell you a little a bit about a product that got developed through my research, and now we're trying to bring to the market. So the uh, name of our company is Caregiver Watch, and the goals of our company are to support family caregivers of individuals with cognitive impairment, primarily uh, persons with dementia, but also the younger families of kids with uh, autism as well, as um, other families that have caring for individuals with frailty. And our overall, our goal is to develop and commercialize evidence-based products that meet the needs not only of the care recipient, uh, but also of the caregiver. And the product that we have right now called Care Alert, the major functions of this product is to reduce injuries and dangerous activities in the person with dementia, particularly during the nighttime, as well as prevent unattended home exits. Some people call this wandering, where they wander away from the home. Um, so um, it probably is a little less than wandering, but um, that's another another topic for another science talk. And um, the, uh, the issue with the caregiver is that they have to be constantly vigilant through the day and also through the night. So most dementia caregivers will say that they have to be in the home with that individual in order to keep them safe 24-7. And about a third of the caregivers actually say they need to be in the exact same room of the person with dementia in order to keep them safe. So you can imagine those level of vigilance over years of time that they care for this individual would be extremely demanding on one's psychology as well as their physiology. We also want to ensure that as long as the person with dementia and the caregiver want to continue in those two role in the caregiving role, that we can sustain aging in place. So when we look at uh, the nighttime as a particular example of a problem, we know that persons with dementia, 20% of persons with dementia will have a fall in a given year. The primary reason for those falls are orthostatic hypotension, which means that that individual has to get up, walk a few steps, and then that's the point that they fall, which allows us an opportunity to provide assistance if we can get assistance there on a very targeted and timely manner. We also know that they are at risk for unattended home exits. Those, those of you that are in states with a silver alert, you'll see silver alerts up there because people have drove, driven away without uh, and, and become lost. That's about 5% of those incidents, another 95% walk away, particularly at the night, and those that leave at the night are more likely to die out in the community of exposure after they become lost. And we also know that they're at risk for injuries uh, in issues of home safety, for instance, burns, floods in the home, uh, things like that. As a result, the caregiver has to respond to this. So particularly at the night, what happens is persons with dementia, they lose their sleep weight cycle. They're no longer in train because those brain cells have died. So now they have this really unpredictable nighttime activity. This unpredictable nighttime activity causes this hypervigilance in this caregiver, and then it starts this vicious cycle where the caregiver has, uh, has to awaken to kind of continue to check. They become worried, then they get fearful that they've missed them. There's a lot of uncertainty. And this leads to these care, uh, caregiver sleep problems and um, a pattern of chronic insomnia where the caregivers have very low levels of total sleep time, very high levels of unwanted wake time during the night. And um, we've um, actually done a qualitative study and this model emerged from our qualitative work about what actually happens to the caregiver. And this then really results in a whole cascade of events that actually results in their inability to care for themselves because they just are so fatigued. And then they don't go out and uh, energize themselves with uh, friends and uh, family as well. So, and we know that caregiver health is worse as a result of being a caregiver. We know that caregivers suffer from earlier mortality. We know that these caregivers, dementia caregivers in particular, have higher rates of heart disease. And in kind of a devastating study that came out now about two years ago, we know that caregivers, the spousal caregivers, are at six times the risk of getting Alzheimer's disease themselves. And there's a huge gender effect there. Wife are four times more likely and husbands are 13 times more likely. So all you males, it's, uh, you're gonna wanna be looking for something uh, before it's time for you to become a caregiver. So really our goal was really to take this idea where we merge this problem that the persons with dementia have and we mer merge this really maladaptive response that caregivers have and we develop brand new technology then that actually uh, addresses both of these individuals' needs. 
So this uh, little diagram here is a map of how long it's taken me to get where I'm at. So um, at the point that we really identified these problems in the person with the dementia and in the caregiver, it became evident that there was a technologic solution. This isn't something that normal nurses do. I don't know anything about engineering. I have no, no real product development. I certainly don't have any business sense. And um, so certainly tried to give this away as many years as I could. Those are all those years in there. We had a number of partners and for whatever reasons didn't work out. And now fortunately joined up with Steve Greenstein who's made a small business out of this and we're trying to take this now as a small business to market. So as similar to what all the care people have said here that this really emerges from the needs assessments and all the work that we've done with the caregivers as well as amount, enough, several million dollars worth of funding in order to uh, get this product development developed through STTR grants through National Institutes of Nursing Research and now we have an R01 using this technology through National Institutes on Aging. Here's what our products look like. This is what we started with. So this is student work that we did. The electrical engineers are on one side and the mechanical engineers you can tell on the other side. <laughs> then we went on to working with a small company with our uh, STTR product and then they uh, were enabled to move forward. Then we started paying for our own development. This was one of our prototypes and then we merged and this is the product that we have today. Um, we really have, you know, some very critical design features. It has to be tolerable to the person with dementia, it has to be usable by caregivers, etc. has to be simple and intuitive, it has to be dedicated. We didn't want a reoccurring model and um, also we wanted to make sure that we could support future enhancements. We had extremely high satisfaction with this device in our studies. This is a survival analysis for those of you guys who are scientists. We had a 85% reduction in nighttime events with the use of this device because the caregivers could provide help. Uh, so we're out of time to look at that too much. But from a business case, there's a lot of healthcare expenses that can be prevented from this. The number one reason persons with dementia are ho hospitalized is uh, syncope and falls. And um, we really can also impact the life of the caregiver as well. These are, we see, we saw dramatic improvements in all of these issues with the caregivers with the use of the system in our clinical trials. So we're here looking for uh, capital. We are tooled and ready to go. And we just need uh, capital for our minimum order quantity and we're ready to go to market. Awesome.